My name is Shannon Jay, and I am in deeply involved in the, in the campfire cat rescue effort. My background is uh, I spent between the Tugs fire, the car fire, and the camp, now the campfire, somewhere north of 1,000 hours in the burn zone hunting fire cats, most all of it at night. And I'll be the first to tell you I am not an expert. I don't have all the answers, uh, but I reckon a thousand hours in the burn zone hunting fire cats uh, is worth a little bit. That being said, I do have some experience and I, I learned a lot through successes and failures on some things that, that might work for you folks and my job is just to patch them on to you and, uh, and see if I can help you. I, I think it's important that when you have something you can pass on to other people that may help them that you should share that. And. Uh, so that's sort of the origins of my background, and uh, I can tell you, um, can, I, um, can I ask maybe a show of hands how many folks are here because you are missing your own fire cats? It looks like about 90% of you are fine. If my uh, not great math skills are correct. Uh, and I would like to start by telling you that you, you all have lived in, in it. I imagine a whole bunch of you in this room have lost your homes, and please accept my deepest sympathies. I, I've never, I, I lost a home when I was an infant, but don't remember it. Uh, but other than that, I have not been affected by this, so um, I don't know what you're going through, but I can only e be uh, empathetic to you and this, this dark path uh, that is just a shadow of cloud, a cloud of darkness that has come over you. And if I can help you get your fire cats back, then and I, I hope that can bring some light back to you. I really, if that is what I wanted to do, uh, I will tell you this. I've been in that burn zone at campfire for probably 80 plus hours in the burn zone hunting fire cats and I've seen uh, I've seen a lot I've seen a lot of hope I've seen some tragedy there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cats in that burn zone waiting to be rescued hundreds hundreds I rescued a critically injured cat um, I burned cat on day 16 last Saturday on the 23rd I rescued a, a, a fire cat that was uh, without food and uh, maybe some water for 23 days he probably lost well over half his body weight and he is alive and he is he is healing and, and my segue into that is you, you cannot assume your cat has perished it may have the, the odds are that someone in this room your cat didn't make it those are the odds but I tell people this all the time and I'm, I'm not blowing smoke up anybody's skirts until you find a body or remains do not assume your cat has perished don't do it. Don't do it. You're making the biggest mistake you could possibly make. And and and, and I'll get into the, the why of that in a couple minutes, but the real deal here is that these animals, um, somehow they find a way. They just do. I have never, uh, the number one reason that people do not get their lost animals back, cats in particular, is because they gave up. That is far and away because they gave up. And I'm not, a, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a reverend, I'm not gonna sit up here and preach the gospel. I'm gonna tell you this though, if you take one thing away from this. Uh, so, that is the number one thing that um, it causes animals to never be recovered because the folks gave up. And it's a human thing, you haven't seen the animal. It was a firestorm that has never been seen before anywhere in this country. And it would be a natural inclination to go, I cut my losses, and you know what, That's we do that as a natural mechanism to protect ourselves. I'm just gonna assume my cat's gone. I don't want to stress. I don't want to um, worry. I don't want to just. I just have to come to the truth, my own truth, that my cat has not made it. And um, you can't do that. I have never seen an animal with a will to survive like a cat. And I'm gonna tell you the quintessential example of that that occurred to me last year on November 3rd at two o'clock in the morning in the middle of nowhere at the Tubbs fire. I was driving down the road and uh, if, if you know much about that fire, it burned deep into country areas and it burned right into a city where 12 square blocks and 800 homes are scorched or gone. And Paradise in, in the areas I worked, I worked in the deep country, is very similar country without so many conifers or fir trees and pine trees, but very similar. And I was driving about two o'clock in the morning with my hand out the window in the winter with a flashlight and I caught something that reflected for just blip. It was that fast. What was that? And I backed up my truck 
and I turned my flashlight on and put my binoculars up and there was a cat in the bush about 40 yards away and I had caught one half of one of his eyes. And when it was all said and done, it took me an hour and a half to, to rescue this cat whose name is Brutus. And this was day 26. Brutus was severely burned on all four of his feet. Ears burned off, tail, his entire coat felt like a Brillo pad. And Brutus was still alive. He had lost over half his body weight and had no food and no water for 26 days. Today, Brutus is healed and he is healthy. So if you take nothing away from this, you gotta remember, cats have a will to survive like nothing I have ever seen in my life. It's astounding. And I lived it and I breathed it and I saw it for a thousand hours. They don't wanna leave this planet. They just don't. So I think it's important um, for you to take that to heart. So this is this presentation I'm giving you is I'm gonna, um, there are some specific stuff about equipment and tactics that are uh, related to folks who are gonna do the rescuing, um, helping other people can't help themselves and that more than anything else I want to um, leave something with you homeowners so when you get back in the zone that you can start this process yourself because you're gonna have to. There's not enough rescuers. Um, there's been a lot of uh, controversy swirling around this entire effort. There's been a lot of fingers pointed and a lot of issues. There have been many shortcomings, and I, I'm not gonna, I don't care about that at this point. A lot of mistakes have been made on this path, but we, I can't change that and neither can you. We can move forward and do everything you can to, to, to put something into this effort to get these animals um, safely rescued. And that uh, winter's coming, winter is here. And there are still survivors out there, there are burned cats out there, there's, there's just, like I told you, uh, when it comes to fighting for its life, a cat will fight will fight like the third monkey on a ramp to Noah's Ark and it's raining. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's funny, but it's true. It's absolutely true. They just love dig in and they'll just, they'll just go all the way to the very end. So have heart, believe that your cat may be out there. Um, and um, I, I wish, you know, I don't have the, the fancy PowerPoint and uh, audio visual presentation to give, it's just me talking. My, uh, my, my uh, other partner who I work with and I two weeks ago rescued a cat named Hollis, big orange cat. And Hollis was inside his house when it burned. Hollis doesn't have a mark on him. Windows blow out of houses before the entire structure catches fire. Cat, cats, many cats perish. Out. Say that one more time. Windows will blow out of houses before the entire house is consumed, giving a cat a potential escape route. So Paulus was inside his home when it burned. And we trapped him maybe 12 days ago. Paulus doesn't have a mark on it. He was in the house. Now, surely many cats did perish in homes, but don't make these assumptions. So uh, that that is sort of like the... the, the Motivation and hope I want to give you is stories like Brutish. And um, yes, ma'am. What about mobile homes? Is that the same kind of? Uh, I'm not a structural engineer, but I would presume windows blow out, and, and, and an animal can have an escape route. They're, it's amazing. It just truly is. So um, I'm not trying here to give false hope. I'm here to give hope and talk to you about the things that I can pass on to you on how to get your cat back.